Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 9 of What If Naruto Was a Hope of the Uchiha Clan. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share it all with your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, remember to stay tuned for the brand new episode coming over Anime King 2 and Anime Making 3. Yes, if you're new, you heard that correctly. I indeed have three channels, Anime Making 2 and Anime Making 3. Which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replaying talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. <laughs> So the last part we left off, the elders, as everyone was gathered, all of the clan heads were there, and Tajima being the head of the Uchiha clan, the others, the Namikaze, and, and the Shaimira clan, Toby Shaimira wanted to skin the elders, to make everyone realize that you don't mess with the Uchiha clan head hierarchy, but Naruto said that he will be the one to do it, as he will take it on himself already. But they told him that he didn't need to do that after all. They had people that can do these things. But he said that he was already the king slayer. What would more dead change? So with that, the three last council head members were gathered. As Naruto came there as they spoke, their words hit him deep. To them that he was no Uchiha. He was some kind of parasite, a monster, that should be purged from a clan. But he did his job as he severed their heads clean off, without hesitation. And it was done. As he walked away, later that night near it, and Tejima found him at the bar. As they both sat down there, as they spoke to him, the topic went on different things. They also told him the reason why they hate Senjus. When Naruto's grandfather wanted to bring peace, but he was ambushed at the meeting place and slaughtered. And all of their brothers and sisters, except for Tajima and Nira, survive. That is why they're Hatred for the Senju was so deep. Neri also let Naruto enter her mind to see his mother as he was so happy, as he thanked the both of them for everything with that he made his way off. The time finally came as they met up with the Senjus, as Naruto went there with Tobi and also Ariai, along with his king's guard men. As he arrived, they saw Senju Hoshirama. Sanadi was furious, along with her two other brothers being there. As they looked towards him with a glare, Naruto didn't believe in this at all because Inja was supposed to be the rightful head of his father's clan and yet he was not picked his younger brother was, despite him being the oldest, so this all of this should have belonged to them. But no, instead an old fool with money and power had it over them and he was in charge, Naruto did not like the way that Daimyo had more power over them, he hated that. He also let it spell that he was the one that spared Sned life that day. Hoshiram was shocked by that as they were all invited to stay. Later that night, Naruto got some letters. One from his father about the regime that is going on and the troops that are waiting just in case. He also got one from Shizuka. Indeed, she was pregnant. With twins. As Naruto made up his mind as he already knew what to do. He also spoke to Mikoto as well as he was no longer that same man from before. Things had changed and Mikoto was just happy that he was opening up to her. But as Naruto thought about it, he was going to be a father, the news was shocking. He already made preparations in his mind, just had hoped that everything play along. So with that, they made their way straight towards the Daimyo's dining era, with Hoshirama and Snad there, as they sat down as Nero was by his side, as they start their formal talks. As the Daimyo told them about the bigger threat, the Uzumaki clan has been targeted by some unknown people 
Everyone knew that the Land of Lightning always tried to privilege everything that they wanted, especially for Jutsu, but it wasn't them. It turns out that the Land of Lightning up in the coast had been wiped out and many other smaller clans. Something. Something was brewing in the conflict that no one seemed to notice but Daimyo found out about it. And soon enough, this thing was gonna decimate the Senjus and Uchiha's. And they had to work together. But Neri said no. All of the past could not just be forgiven, they could not just work together. The Daimyo told that she was right. Talk could not fix things that easily, but a political marriage could. As he focused on Snadi and Ruto, the both of them narrowed their eyes dangerously towards a man. Was he really suggesting what he thought he was suggesting? So, yeah, guys, those big skills were left off. You guys can switch across the place to check out for yourself. So, it's begins new episode. Kajima sat in his tent that was located in the center of the army. It was barely a two hour journey so that he could bring their 10,000 strong and destroy the entire capital. After reading what he just read, he wanted to burn the city and all its residents. In front of him, Madara looked like he was about to explode because under simple negotiations, the Senjus had strong armed them with the Daimyo's help. He looked at his own sister and could help but feel sorry for her and his son as well. On the Daimyo's suggestion, Hoshirama has agreed to let Snad the Senju marry Naruto. The Daimyo first wanted the girl to marry Madara to keep the peace, but Hoshirama somehow managed to prevent that. That's a good thing because Madara is really relationship material, said Neri. But all of them were dead serious. And in return, they want you to marry Hoshirama, said Tajima. Not only was Neri quite a few years older than the Senju boy, who claimed to be a clan head, but Tajima would never, never allow that to happen. She saw his feelings clearly in his face as she placed a hand on his shoulder. They knew how much we mean to each other, and it will guarantee that Snadi will remain safe. The Daimyo has also proposed to build a military village. On his expense, where our two clans and our allies shall resign in a few years, all factions shall receive work from the royal capital, and in return we swear our loyalty to the royal family. Each and every clan said Neri. We will not bend, said Madara. Madara, what happens to things that don't bend, said Neri. Before he could answer, Tajima spoke. What are you implying, said Tajima, as he knew that there was more to this mess. Neri sighed, but she came forward with the truth. If we refuse this offer, we're going to be charged with treason. The Daimyo has threatened to call his armies and ally himself with the Senjus. And together they will butcher us until there is not a single one and our supporters left. A dark, glaring hatred arrived in Tajima's eyes. Her brother had never forgiven the Senjus for what they did to his family. And if he went forward with this, his beloved sister, more than anyone else, would be held as a hostage for the rest of her life. In this political marriage, the revenge that he wanted for his entire life was slipping from his grasp. So they have already sent us a warning message, said Tajima. As Madara stepped forward, they prevented my brother from coming to explain his offer and only send you. They're holding him hostage. They might try to hide it behind colorful words, but that is what they're doing. Even if he's comfortable living in the palace, his life is in danger. Come, father, give me the man, and I'll put an end to this once and for all. Madara, as Neri, received a dark glare from him, but she saw the real reason behind his anger. I will not sell any of my family, he said. Despite the situation, they were proud to hear those words from Madara. They knew he was not as refined or cunning as Naruto, but he had a quality about him. He was loyal to his family, his clan, his allies, and he would defend them to the end, no matter the odds against him. Madara, you're proposing that we rise and open rebellion against the Fire Shadow himself, Tajima said. He wanted to make sure the boy was thinking this over clearly, and it was not just some quick thinking and rage. Both of them stared at him as he went quiet for a few seconds. But his mind was made up. Yes, he said. As both of them got up and stood by his side, our best bet is to storm the capital and eliminate the royal family. If possible, take Hoshram and his family hostage. If we can achieve that, then the Senjus and the allies. They will bend their knees, said Neri. Madara, do not forget what the Daimyo has done to ninja clans in the past. That has opposed him, said Tajima. Burn their homes, butcher their men, rape their women and slit their children's throats, said Madara. He knew what Rega was capable of in his younger years, and years that passed did not make the man any kinder. But Madara knew 
if they accept this deal, there will never be any hope for the Uchiyas ever again. They will forever be enslaved to a common merchant just because he has damn money and men. And they had to play nice to an enemy that they had fought for thousands of years. Hell no. It is better to die on our feet than forget who we are, said Madara honestly. As Nier gave him a stern look. If we lose, your father die, your brother die, your people die, we all die, she said. Tajima nodded. As Madara saw it, no matter what he made, no matter the choices, Tajima would support him. As they could not bend to this. His father worse did not like the Senjus, and agreeing to this would be blasphemy. Going up against Hoshiram and the Senjus were one challenge too. But going up against the Senjus and the Daimyo was suicide. Well, Madara wasn't sane to begin with anyway, as he grinned wickedly. Well, that makes it simple then, said Madara. Meanwhile, at the capital, Shisui and the other members of King Guards watched her to demolish his clones. In brutal combat, his anger was clear for all to see. They all heard Snavi roar when the action was proposed. But on the other hand, Yuta went so silent that it was frightening. But he was repressing his anger and let note in different ways, like fighting his clones. As Mikato looked towards the man that she loved, as she saw that he was suffering, her only consolation was that she was happy that he was opposed to this marriage, just like her. This would destroy all their plans for the future, and not just for the Uchiyas, but she could understand that Uchiyas didn't have many options. The group had already sealed off this area and place, silencing seals so no one could eavesdrop. Well, not that it mattered because Naruto was in the mood to talk to anyone. They watched him battle against an army of clones for an hour. He only stopped when the last one died by his hands. He was panting harshly with his body covered in sweat but his anger was still there. But Itachi stepped forward. What are we gonna do? He said. At first, Naruto did not say anything until Kagamai coughed. As he turned towards them, I know what my brother will do, he said. Rebellion, said Kagamai. As Naruto nodded. But Naruto would follow Madara to the end. If Madara chose, the Uchiha and Naruto would back into the very end, no matter what. Consequences be damned. Shisu, on the other hand, saw how worried Naruto was. This decision right here would either permanently set the Uchiha's future or it would destroy them all together as he stepped forward and Naruto did not know what to do. The way I see it, our only chance is to take the capital and eliminate the royal family. Our army has more than what the Senjus and the Daimyo has in the capital right now. If we take the city before they can call for their armies across country, then we win, said Chisui. How can we do that, said Naruto curiously. We have Tobirama, we can use them as a hostage to make the Senjus back down from the capital and retreat. But it is not a sure bet, so I suggest that we take one of them else as our prisoner. Who? Say Takashi. Snaddy or Karurama. The girl's a hothead who's ready to jump at anything, and the boy's a weakling. If we have more than one of Oshirama's siblings, then he'll be forced to run away and leave the daimyo behind. Then we can overrun the city, said Itachi. There's one problem. How do we allow our armies to rush in? The walls are chocker proof, the gates are even stronger. And trying to break through those seals will give the daimyo time to call for reinforcements. If that happens, we will surround you from both sides. Ready to be butchered by Daimyo's men. Shisu and Itachi glanced towards each other, something that was not missed by the others. It seems that they already thought about this problem. The Daimyo has 4,000 soldiers in the city, all of whom will be on guard until we submit to their offer. They're on high alert right now and they will notice immediately if we make any move. That is not even counting the 3,000 Senjo forces inside the city. If Madara wants to take the city, we cannot just do it with brutal force, said Itachi. Then what do you propose, Naruto asked. The only way the city will be unprepared for a surprise attack is when a wedding will be taking place. I'm not saying that you have to go through with it, but if our enemies are busy enjoying the celebrations, they will believe that is when they have broken us and we can strike, Itachi said. What's the plan, said Kagamai and Mikato in unison. Naruto and everyone listened as both Itachi and Shisui explained their plan. It was bold and risky and a good chance of all of them dying before Madara even reached the gates. There was also another problem if the wedding was going to happen, Madara and Tajima had to be there, and all the other clan heads as well. No amount of excuse would suffice for their actions, and it might just give the plan away. Still, both Shisui and Itachi had faith in their group and the 500 fighters that he brought to the capital. They didn't have to capture the entire city, but just a few parts with speed and quick thinking 
there will be no room for error because the punishment was clear death. By the time the two of them finished, everyone was on board. They all knew what the risks were but they would not submit to the daimyo who was trying to force his power down their throat. Today it was the marriage, tomorrow it would be sending them out on errands to fight, people for him because he won't keep his family in power. No, they would not submit to that man, a goddamn merchant. The dragons never bow to a sheep and they will never do so ever. Time skip. As Naruto walked to the capital and saw, Kram is sleeping under a tree. It had taken great persuasion to even convince the daimyo to allow Kurama to get inside. As Naruto was nervous the first time, stepping up to his friend. As Kurama was watching him, he watches every single move. The moment Naruto stepped towards him, he said four words. We're going to war. All these years Kurama has been by his side. He knew him. He knew him a lot. He saw the look on his face. And Naruto was not going to lie. Yes. As Kurama sighed, would it be that bad to accept their offer? I know it's not perfect. Kurama stopped speaking when he noticed looking in her eyes. He was not doing this out of spite or vengeance. He had no choice. Will you fight with me? said Naruto. As the fox clenched his jaw. I love Ashura too, you know. His children are as much as part of my family as you are. If I agree to do this, I will be slaughtering half of my family. As Naruto always knew that Kurama didn't have the hatred for Sanjus that he had. The fox was not sympathetic, but that didn't mean he didn't want to kill them all. My family would not bow to this daimyo who was abusing his power, said Naruto. As Kurama snorted, and you think your people would not do the same if they win? No, they would do worse. You will butcher the Sanjus down to the last child, said Kurama. As Naruto wanted to say no on that, but he could not, knowing his family, especially his brother, and now knowing what his father and sister went through. They will kill every last angel even if it meant the extermination of the Uchiha themselves. There was going to be no victory, only death and suffering. Your clan and all your supporters will die, brutally. Even if you somehow win, you will have your revenge but there will be no one left. This cheer that satisfaction with, said Grandma. Naruto clenched his fists. What do you want me to do? My family is going to war. I know it. I cannot just stand by and let them die. They had been there for me all my life. Most of all, I swore to defend my people, no matter what. I'm not going back on my word, even to me, my death, said Naruto, as he clenched his face shut. Tell me something. As Naruto paused, he saw Kurama's eyes. The fox looked worried. Do you want to kill all the Senjus? I want Tobirama to die and the Senjus to pay for what they did to my brother. That is not the answer to my question, said Kurama patiently. Naruto paused and stared at his friend, who looked back at him without a flinch. Somehow the beast knew what was inside Naruto's heart and he was forcing him to say it out loud. If they bend the knee, I will accept their surrender and put an end to this war. Why? said Grandma. I know what war is taking from my family. I want to end it, but I cannot. I will not betray my family. For that, I will make Madara see reason. So he doesn't kill all his angels. He will listen to me. Grandma did not share his confidence. Naruto was a good person, but he had one weakness, a great weakness. Loyalty. It was that same loyalty that made him become a king slayer. That same loyalty that would make him fight for Madara, down to the bitter end. Your loyalty will kill you someday. I know, said Naruto. Kurama looked at his one friend that he had. In such a long time, Naruto never asked him for anything, defend him. Despite everything and gave him his loyalty, his trust, his respect. As he looked into the boy's eyes, Kurama knew what was going to happen and seemed like Naruto knew it as well. He was going to die. The Uchiha's didn't have the power to defeat both Senjus and Daimyo. And the moment Madara tried to break into the city, Naruto would be slaughtered because he would be trapped right in the center of thousands of enemies that want his head and they would not hesitate to bring a death to him. And Hushram was there as well. His death would be brief and swift. And that would make Madara lose his mind and chaos was gonna rule. Why did his only friend have to be a Uchiha? I will not force you to fight for me, said Naruto. But if you don't, can you do something for me? What is it? You remember Shizuka, right? Kurama nodded. Even if the tree burns, one branch shall survive, said Naruto. Kurama eyes widened as he understand what Naruto meant. He was going to be a father. Look after them, said Naruto. With one last smile, Naruto walked away. As Kurama watched him go. Damn these Uchiha's. Wait. As Naruto paused. I will fight for you. But only on two conditions. As Naruto gulped. Despite not looking at it because of his smaller size, Kurama was more powerful than the ink carried Daimyo's army and the Senjus. If the fox joined him then he could take Hoshirama. I'm listening, 
you will marry Snellis Angel. Naruto was about to explode but Kurama, that look in his eyes, stopped Naruto from saying anything. The fox was serious and wanting to be quiet. And you will convince Madara to spare the Senjus and their allies if they surrender. That include Hoshirama and her family. That include Tobirama. Promise me this on your honor, Kurama said seriously. Kurama never saw. Naruto looked at him so furiously before, but Kurama did not back down. He loved this boy and he would not let him die, but at the same time, he promised the Sage that he would look after his family. Both families. Those two morons, if they want to fight, he had to make sure they didn't extinct each other. It was just like Indra and Ashura. Their generation went on for thousands of years. And no matter what, no one abandoned me. So the war continued on and on and on. Watching Kram have to watch it all. The best Kram I could do was to save these stupid plants from total annihilation. That meant that he would have to kill Senjos. And that would take a toll on his consciousness. It was not a small sacrifice. But at the same time, what Kram asked from Naruto was large. Letting go of his revenge. Accepting that woman as his wife. For the first time, Shizuka words came back to haunt Naruto. There will be three incidents in your life where you have to make choices that will change this world. As Naruto knew how important Kurama's support was, the beast could save the life of thousands of his people, but he would not fight unless he had those promises. And those things were against Naruto's belief. Marrying Snade was like a bitter pill, but spearing Tobirama. But if he didn't do this, then his family. I'll marry her, said Naruto. Kurama saw the fear in his eyes, but he ignored that. And Tobirama said Kurama, as Naruto fist clench, I'll spear him, I'll spear him if he surrender, same go for the rest of the Senju said Naruto, Naruto said Kurama, damn you for forcing me in this position, there's been many times when they were pissed off at each other but Naruto has never looked at him like that before, as Kurama knew that he deserved that look because he took away the one thing that Naruto wanted the most in this world, if it was any other Uchiha Kurama would never believe them but Naruto was different, he wasn't like any other Uchiha. And he always kept his promises, no matter what happened. Time skip, Snally was sitting down patiently, in one of the training grounds. Her attempt to make her brother back down from marriage proposal, it hadn't worked at all. She had rage and screamed, threatened to rip his head off with her drama, did not even blink towards her, and her threats. He then got serious as he told her to do her duties. He was doing the same thing marrying a Uchiha woman that was older than him, and that hated his guts. Thinking about that man made her heart fill with fear and disgust. He was a handsome man with good humor. He was strong and powerful. And he was more sensible than any other Uchiha that she has ever seen before. But the things that he'd done, she couldn't stand them one bit. He had killed his own people, man, woman, even little children. She didn't care what reason he had nothing to justify that butchery. What can a man do such a thing to his own people? If he did that to his own people, what would he do to her? He was smart enough not to hurt her physically, and he would take him on if he tried anything. But he wouldn't do anything because Neri would be in the position of their clan. Not to mention she saw it. Those two really care for each other, and he would do anything to protect her. But he would still try to make her life a living hell. She would be surrounded by Uchiha's in the midst of a clan that hated her guts, a husband that despised her. She didn't know if she could handle that for the rest of her life. She did not know. She loved her clan, her family, but this... This was just too much. Hoshirama was so desperate for peace, he did not see the danger in his plan. The daimyo was all for it because he was the one that benefited the most. From this little arrangement, that man did not give a crap about Sinadi, Hoshirama, or Naruto or Nere. He only cared about himself. Inma has also agreed with Hoshirama despite everything. It made her feel betrayed. It got to a point where she couldn't even look at them, despite loving them. Her only brother who would have destroyed this plan and made Hoshirama see reason was currently being held prisoner. Silent tears fell from her eyes as she remembered her time with Tobirama. Her second eldest brother was not a man of many words and he most liked silence. But he always looked after her and he knew that there could be no peace with the Uchiha's. Two swords could not exist together. It was Tobirama that insisted that she stay back and not participate in the mission that take back the Yamnaka territory. She was pissed off and she called him selfish, she cursed at him. But he simply stayed calm and told her it was risky to send too many members of their family. He was right, if she had gone with him, there might have been a good chance that the both of them would be sharing the same cell together and Hoshirama wouldn't be in a place to negotiate. God only knew what those red-eyed bastards did to her brother. He was alive, that was for certain. But had they fed him properly, taking care of his wounds, were they torturing him in other ways? She knew there was other ways than physical torture and the Uchiha's were expert at that. She missed him so much. 
Her eyes caught glance of someone watching her from a nearby tower. As she saw his golden armor, his eyes were even sad than hers. Whatever anger he had, it was behind a stoic face. He was against this as much as her rumors were. He had a mistress that he loved dearly. Not only was she marrying the man that she hated, but he already loved someone else. It was the worst possible nightmare. Both helpless souls just look at each other. Meanwhile, Madara explained the daimyo's offer, well, a command to them, to the other clan heads. He did not conceal anything away from them. He told them everything about the military village that daimyo wanted to build, and it started an uproar. They all served the fire shadow in a way or another, but if they accepted this, they would become permanent slaves to that man. No one could understand why the Senjus were so easy to give up, but Lucius and their allies was in no mood. Tajima told them of their son chance, and if they feel what will happen, it had led to a lot of decisions, hiring mercenaries, getting aid from another daimyo of another land. But all of those options will take time, money, resources, none of which Uchiha's had in abundance. The Uchiha's and their allies had decent wealth, but nothing too extreme like daimyo. All they had was 10,000 highly trained ninjas and Madara. They could still muster up 5 to 6,000 more fighters, but that would be made up of young children, barely able to lift blades, and women and men that were not able to fight properly against a trained army that forced to be decimated quickly. As Madara had said no to that option, his brothers had been children when they were thrust into wars. He wouldn't let that happen again. We should support the daimyo's brother. He has a lot of influence and could help us topple the pompous bastard. Proposing of Namikazes, he is even worse. It was true, the daimyo had other people that wanted to topple him, but they were even worse, some of them. And despite everything, a snake never changes ways. They would try to command the Uchiha's in the far future, and the Uchiha's didn't like that at all. As Toby got up and stepped forward, my lords, here's what I think about the royal family and the Senjus. As Toby showed the mega finger, making Madara near smile, as Tajima remained silent though, we do not bow to our enemies. We do not kiss the boots of a damned civilian to Toby, as the others roar in acknowledgement. It is the dragons that we bow to, and the dragons are still here. As Madara stiffened and Toby pulled his blade and pointed towards him. There is our only leader I will ever bow to. The first Akagi said Toby. Tajima and Nero watch in surprise. As Arya and Namikaze stepped forward as well. Both her and Toby had went with Naruto. But he insisted that he go back with his aunt in case any enemies were there to wait and to ambush them on the road. Now they were glad that they followed that order. Screw the Daimyo. Screw the Senju. First Okagi declared Arya. As she unleashed her sword and knelt before Madara, Shina Berami got up. He was not that boisterous, but he also pledged allegiance to the first Okagi as well. Madara watched as every clan head rose up to him and knelt as they called first Okagi. He saw in their eyes faith and loyalty. They believed in him, and he would not let them bow to anyone else. They would not become slaves. They would not just be used like that. They were his allies, they were his people, and he are none of them. They would never bow down to a merchant. And the Senjus ever. Time skip. Naruto watched as a couple of children play. They were in one of the ponds, splashing around happily in the capital. They had no idea what horrors were out there. They were innocent, young child that didn't know anything. It made him think about the future and his two children. They would be this innocent as well because he wouldn't know anything about this world. When Madara and his father come here, they couldn't do anything. It will be them that suffer, watch your parents, their family get taken away. The civilians had no say in what the daimyo did, but they will be the one to suffer. And if the Senjus and the daimyo push back his family, and if he had to release Kram on them, all hell would break loose. He knew what Kram was fully capable of. Kram could destroy this entire capital within 10 seconds and kill everyone. Even if he tried to fight carefully, thousands of civilians would get caught in the crossfire. You got that look in your eyes again. As Naruto turned to see Itachi standing there, Itachi was a man of few words, but he understand people. What look? As Itachi stepped beside him and observed the plain children, the look that said I'm going to do something incredibly brave or stupid said Itachi. As Naruto smiled at that blunt statement, Itachi has never been one for holding back his words. Our ancestors ruled the worlds. They taught the art. They maintained peace across the land until the war between Indra and Ashura broke out. Then everything changed. What are you saying? asked Itachi. Our people always say that we're the rightful rulers of this world, that we are superior and all others should bow before us. We have the royal blood inside us, we have the power and mind to rule, but are we truly good rulers? 
In fact, I don't even know what a good ruler is in Naruto. Itachi remained silent as he pondered over those words, as he looked towards the children. I think you already know the answer, Naruto, he said, with a small smile. I have to destroy something great. I have to send thousands of innocents to their death. A good ruler would never do this to those people. This is a time of war. But Naruto shook his head at that. Then how are we better than the Senjus? We do not care about the lives around us, just our own. How are we good rulers? But that is the way of the world, Itachi said. Then it's bloody wrong, said Naruto as he clenched his fists. As Itachi saw it, Naruto didn't want to do this. He didn't want those people down there, those innocents, to just die like that for no reason. After all, they weren't bad. They didn't do anything to cause this. They were just normal civilian people living their life, and yet hell was going to bring towards their gates. As Itachi sighed, your compassion will kill you someday, he said. As Naruto anger dissipated, as you remember what Grandma said, your loyalty will kill you someday. And they were not wrong, but still. It's better to die as who I am, than become something that I am not. Itachi knew that despite his sarcastic and his playful nature, there was a good, good heart inside of Naruto. He had seen it for the past couple of years. He had the fire, he had everything that come with being a Uchiha, but he didn't want mindless slaughter or suffering. You're going to do something, aren't you? As Naruto nodded, May I know what it is? Itachi asked. As Naruto smiled weakly, not if you want to save your ass and my brother. Itachi flinched, he was a fine warrior, but pissing off Madara was something that he didn't want to do in time soon. However, Naruto was his brother, and a few things that he didn't. I have to echo what my own art is telling me to do, even if I'm not, or will never be a ruler. I have to do what is best for all our people. And if you fail, the war will be inevitable, said Itachi. Then I'll do my duty, as I always have, said Naruto. Time skip. Hushram was having breakfast with his family in the early morning. The atmosphere was tense and awkward, something that never happened before. His sister was not looking at him. She had not talked to him ever since. Inma was trying to make peace between them, but he failed, and he went silently, eating, as he kept on glancing at them though, but neither of them looked at each other. Hushram knew that it would take a long time for her to get over her anger, but he had to try. So, before he could say her name fully, there was a knock. When he gave the permission to enter, one of his angel guards stepped inside and bowed. The man had an apologetic look in his eye for disturbing them at this early hour, but he spoke. My lord, the king slayer is here to see you. Hoshama heard the disgust in the man's voice. No matter how he tried to hide it, he was there. Send him in, Hoshama said curiously. The guard bowed and left, as Hoshama wondered why Naruto was here. As the boy stepped inside in his golden armor, the dark black cloak fluttered on his back as he walked. As Snadi stabbed her fork into her plate. But she didn't say anything. As Naruto had done on his hip, Hoshirama gave a card nod to Naruto, receiving one in return. What brings you here, Naruto? Hoshirama asked, curiously. I just got word from my father and brother. They have accepted your offer, and they will arrive shortly with the other clan heads for the wedding, said Naruto, his face blank. Playing messenger now, are you, Kingslayer? That's beneath you, said Snadi. As Inima sigh, his sister was going to rile up things, as Hoshirama sigh as well. As Hoshirama looked towards Naruto apologetically, I'm not here to play childish games, princess, said Naruto. Good. Then get the hell out, she said. Now, Hoshirama slammed his fist on the table as he creaked under the weight. Silence, he said, as Snadi flinched and went quiet. I apologize for her words, Lord Naruto. Naruto shook his head. Every person is responsible for their actions. You don't have to be apologetic for your sister's deeds. Snadi clenched her fist. Who the hell was he to say that when he had done so many despicable things in his life? But her elder brother seemed impressed with those words. And remembering Hoshirama warning, she went quiet. She didn't say anything. As Naruto was told to take a seat by Hoshirama, which he did. Before anything else could be said, Naruto got straight to the point. This is a mistake. Finally, something that we can agree on, said Snadi, as Hoshirama sighed. Why so, he says, he looked towards Naruto. My people and our allies would never bow to a civilian who is strong arm enough to become slaves. But you just said that your people agreed to the offer, said Inma, confusedly. As Naruto didn't say anything, but Hoshirama saw it, they're going to attack the city. As Snadi and Inma flinch, as he looked towards Naruto, but Hoshirama looked towards him as well. As Naruto did not flinch at all, he focused on Hoshirama alone. I believe they will do just that. Why? Tell me this, Hoshirama said. It was a daimyo who started this, your clan supported this, and my clan will end it in fire and blood. But the people here, so many innocents, will die. 
They should not die for our crimes. They don't even know what is going on. They know about our wars. But for hell to be brought to your doorstep, this is just not right. Don't listen to him, brother. It could be a trap in my warn. I knew the Uchiha's were treacherous bastards. But I never knew your clan could sleep that low. Hoshirama watched Naruto with all those insults. He never lost his cool. He just remained silent. Until he finally looked back up. Why do you desire peace so much, Lord Hoshirama, he said. Because if our clan continue fighting, there's only one result in the end, annihilation of us both, and that is something I don't want. As Naruto nodded, I answer your question now, I want you to answer one of mine. Depends on the question, said Naruto. Why are your people refusing this offer for peace? As Naruto gives hardened, we are a proud clan, Lord Hoshirama. We are not as rich or influential as you as your allies, but we are strong. Despite what you believe, fighting against the Senjus, it's a matter of honor for us because only your people can match our prowess. We hate your people but we respect your power because you earned it. Inma was the one to understand it rather quickly. But the Daimyo has not earned that respect Inma said. As Naruto nodded in surprise, he did not expect Inma to figure it out. You cannot win against the Daimyo's army, much less if you join him, Hoshirama said. I know, said Naruto. Then why, said Hoshirama. You know why, said Naruto. Pride, said Hoshirama. The Uchiha's value their pride. They pay tax to the daimyo, but if it meant giving up everything in their land and bowing to that man's servitude, it was just something they could not do. Hushirama saw it looking in the eyes though. Yet, despite all of this, you will fight. Know that your people are making the wrong decision. It is not my place to make decision. If my brother come here and start the fighting, I will support him fight, said Naruto. But you being here mean that you want to prevent that, said Snaddy. As Naruto looked towards her surprise, she scoffed. Did he think that she was just a pretty face with no brain? But his face simply looked at her with a dead pant look, making her growl that infuriated bastard she thought. I would like to avoid bloodshed if I can. I admit, I didn't clearly think that it would hurt your clan pride, and I truly apologize for that. But make no mistake if your clan make any move against my people, I will retaliate, Hoshirama said. As the man was serious, as Naruto felt the man's power, a bit of his skill in the leaked, but Naruto's sensor ability could feel the depth of his power. It then vanished as Hoshirama gazed off in a bit. How do you propose that we avoid this war, Hoshirama said. If you truly want peace with my people, rather than making them bow by force, do something show them that they are sincere in your actions, said Naruto. How? Inuma said. There is no way my people is to Daimyo after what he did. Even if he kills them all, they will come after him and his family. It is not the most sensible thing, but it is what my people will do. Help smoothing that process along without getting into any contact with us would be a good way to show the Uchiha's your sincerity. You you mean rebel against the Daimyo, Hoshirama said, as he narrowed his eyes at the boy. As Naruto nodded, Hoshirama sighed as he massaged his forehead. What problem has he gotten himself into right now? But Naruto continued, we're already inside the Daimyo's castle. We have enough men if we combine our forces and take the royal family hostage. If that happened, the royal family will surrender and there will be no need for Madara to attack the city. As for my people not attacking yours after the victory, I promise I'll make them back down. And we're just supposed to take your word on that? In my ass. Yes, said Naruto. Or else, you would kill Toborama, said Snaddy, as she saw the underlying threat if the Senju tried to stop the Uchiha's. Very likely, said Naruto. Snaddy gazed turned ice cold. Then it's best, if we have a prisoner of our own, as long as we have you, your brother will not attack us. As Naruto smiled in amusement, trust me, if you try to attack me, you may succeed, but in minutes, the city will be burned to ashes. Hushram was confused as he felt the confidence of the boy. His 500 strong inside the city could not defeat them, but... No. The fox. He heard so much stories about it in his childhood, but it was supposed to be a monumental beast that was capable of bringing down mountains and swipe of its tail. And all this time, that fox, it was it, wasn't it? has been hiding himself as a forest animal. No, he could understand. That beast like that Uchiha's could cause so many damage and that beast was loyal to Naruto. What about the fox brother in my axe? Even Snaddy looked alarmed as she saw the color drain away from her brother's face. Nothing has ever terrified her eldest brother, not even facing Madara. But yet, now he looked worried. Don't be afraid, said Naruto. What is your true goal, Naruto Uchiha? Said Hoshirama. I'm not interested in these petty feuds. What I truly want as he got to his feet and walked towards where the map was. They followed him and stepped beside him. What do you want? They asked. 
What I want for a people is not just land of fire, but as he placed his hand on the entire map and crumbled it together. The kingdom of ninjas, he said. Hoshirama was stunned by that. It was true, the ancestors of the Uchiyas and Senjus had ruled the entire world before their war broke out. No one could stop them if they united if they brought all of their forces together and the power that he had behind it. So either we continue our feud or take back what is rightfully ours. What about revenge against my family? asked Hoshirama. As he looked Naruto directly in the eyes, trying to find any deceit or any lie on his face, Naruto clenched his fists. I don't want to kill all of your people, Shirama. I hate Tobirama for what he did, and I would have killed him no matter what if I hadn't made a promise to someone to spare his life. So if you stop fighting against my family, I won't cause any harm to yours, said Naruto bitterly. Snelly was shocked and Uchiha, who would actually set aside his revenge. Not only was it impossible, but Naruto's grandfather had tried it before, and in him trying to seek peace in the end, he suffered. Yet here he was, willing to take another chance. Was she wrong to judge him, she wondered to herself. Was the path getting in her way of seeing him for who he truly is now? She heard all kind of story about why he killed his people. But she realized something he, she never heard from him before. Before she could ponder more on this, Hoshirama broke the silence. You're asking me, put a lot of trust in you and your people. As Naruto nodded, a risk my family shall equally share. As Hoshirama nodded as well, think about my offer. We either meet in the chambers, discuss terms, or on the battlefield. I hope you make a wise choice, Lord Hoshirama. Have a good day, he said, as he walked away. Wait. As he turned to see all three of them looking at him. Our people may take a long time to trust each other, but if I'm going to go forward with this, I at least need to trust the person that brought it towards me. What can make you trust me, said Naruto. I want to know who Naruto Uchiha truly is. How can I make that happen, said Naruto. Why? Did you do it, Hoshirama asked. As Naruto stood there, unable to accept what was just asked of him, in front of his eyes he saw flashes, the scream, the blood. His hand slightly trembled as the memory of what he did that night came back to haunt him. He swore never to tell the truth to anyone, swore that he would bring that secret to his grave. Yet, in the eyes of the three Senjus, he saw only one thing. They wanted the truth. It was his darkest secret, one more important than the existence of his unborn children, which Aizuka. If he revealed to anyone, he could very likely tear his skin apart. But if he did not, these people would not trust him, and his people would die fighting against the Senjus and Uchiha. And he already revealed to Hoshirama that there was no going back now. I need a drink, he said. There was no way a sober him was going to tell them, even a quarter of the truth. Thankfully, Hoshirama did not question his demand, as he ordered one of his people to get the finest wine. They would not try anything against him because if he died here, Madara would kill Tobirama in the cruelest way possible and then come to burn the city. His brother anger sometimes even terrified him. But after what he was about to do now, it won't be his brother that would be pissed alone. It would be his aunt and his father. When he tell the secret of what happened that night, as he sat down on the couch, as the wine was brought, as he took a drink, Snelly watched him as he gulped it down, as she saw his senses dulling. She seemed to be focusing a lot on the drink. Perhaps someday, if they became friends in the far future, he could go in a drinking contest with her. It all started after our victory at the Great Tamara River, he said. As he was about to reveal the truth behind the massacre, why he became a king slayer, why everything turned out this way. Yes, he was going to tell them to gain their trust, so that more innocents would not suffer. Perhaps this would backfire on him, he did not know. But he believed that he could trust Hoshirama. If nothing else, if nothing more, he could trust Hoshirama. But guys, it'll be in subs right here. If you want the next person to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of the coming your way over on Anime King 2 and over on Anime King 3. If you're new, yes, you heard that correctly. There is no mistake. I indeed have three channels Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what you find every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that right subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me for new. I'll be playing talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, I'm all for now. See you guys soon. Peace out.